Okay, so welcome back everybody. Um, obviously, I made it through the, um, the winter storm. For a while there, we, did, we didn't have electricity. Um, people, well, I wouldn't say people were uh, hoarding it, but um, gas stations ran out of gas, at least nearby. Because I assume so many people were getting um, a good amount for their generators. Because frankly, it's not too difficult to get your hands on an old generator. Um, we do live in sort of a more rural area. So, sort of having access to that, to those things are, is pretty important. But yeah, we're fine now. The sun is back. Um, we have electricity. Um, but yeah, um, the reason I did, well, I'm going to post this to YouTube. So people who watch on YouTube, the, like two or three people might, might not know. But the reason I was doing the, um, well, one of the reasons I was doing one of the, th some of the three hour, like, uh, music streams. And it wasn't even like DMCA friendly music it was like straight up kingdom hearts music and um video game music that would get copyright striked immediately but the reason i did that was one um since you know there were no acs on in the house or anything uh once the electricity came back you know i live in a small house and so the walls are pretty thin and even if you know i'm not too loud or too energetic but frankly um it does get so quiet like at night to the point where you know you sort of start hearing your own uh, blood rushing to your head and stuff and when it gets that quiet and the house is just um every sound almost echoes throughout the house and i'm not sure how to describe it but in a way but essentially when you hear something it sort of get this gets distorted to where you don't know whether it's coming from like a room inside the house or if it's coming from outside um and so it would be concerning for my parents to wake up in the middle of like a cold night with no electricity to like the sound of um like some dude mumbling in the middle of like the night not knowing whether that sound is outside or inside so yeah that's why i didn't do like the mic streams for maybe a few streams it, and the second reason i didn't do the um, the regular mic streams was i don't know if you noticed but those streams were actually quite a bit longer they were like at, at least around two or three hours and I was pretty comfortable with that time, mostly because I find it, I don't know if it's just because I recently started, but I do find it difficult to commentate consistently um, on the game, especially when I'm basically playing the same deck over and over again. So my strategy is pretty linear and pretty straightforward. Um, there's not really much to say. And even if I were to start describing my opponent's deck and what their goal is, it, since it comes up so often, it does tend to be, you know, very quick. Um, there's really no need to elaborate on my opponent's deck every single time I face it. Um, it's just not, it, not logical. I just, it, it would take a, it would take a lot. So... Essentially, maybe an hour into the stream, I realize, you know, I can no longer commentate properly on, like, what my opponent's deck is like, what they're doing. And, you know, it's just, I feel that I'm not providing as much um, entertainment as I could, right? Because I'm just not providing any input. And since I don't have a webcam or anything, no visual input for you guys to see me, it's pretty much all I've got. And it's pretty important for me to con consistently keep uh, 
speaking about you know what i'm thinking about my thought process and stuff because frankly like when i myself watch other uh people streaming like card games and stuff even if i know the decks well um since i just jumped into the stream i tend to be lost in in terms of like what's going on right but if they start sort of going through the motions of what they're doing um i feel like i'm being introduced or sort of like uh, they're explaining to the audience uh, what's going on. So it doesn't matter if you just jumped in. Um, they're going through what their strategy is, what their opponent's strategy is. And, you know, it just feels a little better. Because otherwise, again, even if, even if I know the decks and what's going on, um, if I just hop into a stream and they're just sort of playing um, without saying anything, I'm, you know... I do tend to wonder what's going on in their head, right? And so, while the three-hour streams are more comfortable, um, since I really don't have to narrate what's going on inside my head, right? So, you know, I can just sort of uh, sit back, not think about anything, um, be on my phone in the background while I play. Now, I'm not going to say that I play better um, when it's music streams, although it is nice to be able to listen to um, sort of non-DMCA friendly music. But the issue with sort of playing the music um, I like is that it's music I like to listen to. So I... I would probably most likely get distracted and having to speak over the music I really like listening to uh, can be difficult especially when there's lyrics to the, to the music um, and because of that it's also um, difficult to sort of just play the, whatever songs I want and so that's why these regular streams with like the background music and me commentating for maybe an hour um they're shorter because you know i run out of uh, fuel fairly quickly and it's not even like mental exhaustion it's just um i feel i'm not providing enough to the stream and it's just um yeah not much else to say there. So I'm not sure how I feel about the three hours, like the, the regular just music streams, because it's really just watching gameplay to like my choice of music. And that doesn't do much for a lot of people. And like I, it wouldn't do much for me unless I really like the music that they're playing. Which does tend to be rare, you know. Um, and since I'm barely starting out, I really have to try and reach out to a broader audience rather than uh, just sort of do whatever I want. Not that I'm uncomfortable with like what I'm doing now, um, but it is a little more uh, demanding, which is again why the streams are a little shorter. And what I am trying to, what I am going to try and do, right, with uh, the Shining Fates expansion, is I'm going to try and build a similar meme deck to Mad Party. Because, like, in the meta, you see a bunch of the same decks over and over again. And uh, Mad Party actually stands a pretty good chance, despite being sort of a meme deck. You know, it does get pretty good support. It was sort of meant to be. Um, so now with Shining Fates, I'm looking forward to seeing, like, what new meme decks I can work with. Um, that way I don't have to sort of stick to one deck and play against the entire meta. And, you know, it would be pretty easy to just build a meta deck with, like, Vs and Vmaxes. But... I just don't like playing that way. I don't think it's 
that much fun. So, yeah, I'm going to keep, like, a lookout on my YouTube recommendations and stuff uh, to see what new decks people are brewing. And the main idea is just to find a deck as competent as Mad Party. Because Mad Party, my win rate is pretty much up to whether I draw a good hand. Um, or rather, whether my start is good. And the second is mostly when I draw half my deck, if I draw the cards that I need because, you know, we're drawing a bunch, and if somehow our draw engine stops, or even worse, I misplay, um, then we just lose the game, right? Uh, there's nothing we can do, and there's plenty of times where it's not so much that we brick, but I know the limits of my deck, um, both Mad Party Beta and Mad Party Alpha here. Like, I know the limits of my decks against specific decks. So if I get, like, sort of a mild start against an ADP deck, I know I cannot win that game, no matter what. And so, you know, coming from a chess background, it's sort of a lot easier to cut your losses. Um, and you're sort of encouraged to resign when you're in a loss position. Um, just to be polite to your opponent, because... Um, once you get to a certain level of chess, it's no longer about trickery or hiding your plans. Um, it's more about you both lay out your plans in front of each other, and it's just a matter of who's going to do uh, something about the other person's plans. And so, if you see you're in a lost position and you choose to, you know, stick it out, which a lot, some people do encourage, you know, uh, stick it out to the end in case they make a mistake. But you get to a certain point where you know they're not going to make a mistake. And so it's similar with the ADP deck. You know, they're very consistent with their win conditions. And with Mad Party and like my low chances of setting up quick enough. Um, it is frankly much better to just uh, concede. If I get a bad enough start. And so that's why you often see me just immediately concede um based on either what deck my opponent is playing or my my start if i break it's just game over i can't fix that and sometimes i do stick it out and uh try and bs a good hand um into like decent play i wouldn't say i get wins out of nowhere like it's never usually a comeback it's always more uh, part of the plan to give my opponent some advantage before I start snowballing and taking two or three V's and V maxes in a row. And because of that, um, it's very much a 50 50 deck, which can get a little iffy. Um, I wouldn't say I get tilted too much. Like when I was doing the three hour music stream, I I felt fine. Um, but since it was late night, I eventually got tired. Um, but at a certain point, my performance just starts, you know, decreasing, um, especially when I'm doing commentary at the same time. And Like, misplaying just never feels good in general, but knowing that the longer I play, uh, I might make more, more, I might make more mistakes along the line, or the more games I play, it's just, uh, it's not a great feeling, right? And I get tilted, and then that adds on to decreasing my performance, and it's just a, a snowball effect of uh, not doing good. And not to, again, not to say that I'm I do better when I do the no commentary streams. It's just that if I'm in, in a more comfortable environment and I have more time to cool down, then I'm usually fine. Because when I'm doing commentary, I can't just sort of leave you in silence here. Um, 
while I cool off for like 10-15 minutes. But with the music streams, I can sort of um, let the music do the work. Not that it does a lot, but you know, it fills a void. And I can just sort of chill out um, and sort of go at my own pace. But yeah, that's all I want to get. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, I would be doing more consistent streams now that you know everything is back to normal. Although supposedly next week there's supposed to be like a second wave, a second, a second uh, cold front. Even if it's a little smaller, hopefully it's not though. Uh, hopefully it's not coming at all, um, because some people still don't have electricity um we were lucky enough to get it in maybe four days i think i lost count they all sort of blended together um, because it was just cold mornings cold all day and you're awake for maybe four hours to eat and since we're not used to the cold we just sort of eat get something warm in our bellies and go back to sleep so who knows how many days it was point being um if it doesn't get bad enough to where the electricity goes out then i will be i will be streaming cons consistently so today is going to be this stream then tomorrow um i'd rather not stream just because it's a sunday i get to you know sleep in recover from the whole week of a bad sleep schedule and Monday, we get back to it. And that's what I said last time. Um, before the three-hour streams, I said, you know, Monday, we're going to be back on schedule. But then the winter storm hit, and this just wasn't wasn't great. Um, it was a, literally in a day. We woke up one morning, and it was cold. And... I didn't realize how bad it would get because I thought, you know, it's suddenly cold. It's going to last a few days um, because that's what happens every now and then. But it just sort of got worse. And then the electricity went out after the third day, I think. And yeah, just no way to stream. But we're back now and I'm going to get into some standard games now i don't really have a goal um i feel like the goals really hinder my my progress and besides these lugia gx's are are not great yeah like it's not not the best gx it does look nice though and these black and white series like, I have, I don't know what to do with these. Um, there's really no point in having a collection of sealed packs in, uh, you know, an online trading card game. So, I don't know what the point of these are, I guess, for nostalgia. And actually, I found out recently that a lot of the cards I had when I was a kid were from Diamond and Pearl uh, Legends Awakened. And I looked into the set. Like the set list, the card list. And it was pretty like nostalgic. Um I obviously didn't have any of the 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 level X's. Back then level X was the thing. There was a GX, the V, the V Max. That was the, the big boss cards. But I do remember I think I had like a Rayquaza X X card or something. All I remember was like a a double card. I think it was like split in half or something. It wasn't two separate cards. Or maybe it was. I'm not I'm not sure. It was like a really cool card that I just didn't see value in it. I thought it was fake or something. And eventually those fancy ones got lost. And even the common ones got thrown out eventually. It was just um they were literally held together by rubber bands. And I don't feel too bad because looking like at the prices of those commons, they're still at like 30 cents. And most of the bulk I had was energy anyway. 
And granted, having that old energy would have been nice, but, you know, eh, everything's lost with time. Alright, so now we'll really get into the games. That's actually a pretty nice looking deck box. It's like purple checkered with uh, like yellowish gold. It's like a faded mustard gold. It looks nice. So we do go first. Let's see what our starting hand looks like. Okay. We're going to have to hope we draw... A Pokemon next turn. We need a target for Roxy so we can start drawing and get our commons on the bench. Now, unless this is. Well, actually, we should be fine. They don't. They're just gonna start drawing stuff. Minchino. We haven't drawn any more Pokemon, which is not a good thing. But what is a good thing is that we can actually get ahead in terms of price cards almost immediately. So here's the game plan. We get rid of Giovanni's Exile, right? Then we draw the Weezing, we get rid of both of these since uh, Roxy here doesn't mention anything about V Pokemon since they're more modern. And I do fear that Roxy is going to get rotated out, um, especially with the synergy. We do get a free win there. I do fear the day that Roxy gets rotated out. It would be it would mean the death of of my mad party deck roxy is such a big part in this deck just because you know there's milo for draw support discard two cards and draw a bunch but roxy um it's three cards for each card you discard where milo is only two for each card you discard so you could discard two hard two cards and draw an entire hand's worth of cards. I said I said cards a lot in that, but you get the point. So let's keep going. I don't count that as a win. Um, like best case scenario, they disconnected. So I honestly don't think uh, going first or second counts or matters in in my, at least for my deck the only thing that does matter is my start which this is horrible but i am gonna sort of gamble here if i draw a roxy you know for sure i'm gonna use it they get a jirachi start that's amazing for them they're playing charizard deck this start is terrible for a charizard deck so again if we don't draw a trainer to draw immediately during our turn we might as well resign charizard decks are very fast and charizard decks are also one prizer decks so we really have to get ahead of them fairly quickly and if we can't get ahead of them um then we're just losing because it's a one prizer against a one prizer deck and even if they have a Dedene in their bench, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they usually um, get what they need. And I do wonder, you know, the Leon Charizard deck became very popular. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tricky Gem covered it. But like, I wonder if it's really 
good enough to go up against like the current meta. I haven't seen it like at its full potential. But if it can compete with ADP, then I can understand because, you know, it's basically a one prizer deck beating uh, a deck with tag team GXs and stuff. But it is a meta deck, like, I don't like how it works. Um, I feel I feel like you don't get enough draw power compared to mine. Granted, my draw power is usually cursed. So our start here is decent. More importantly, I don't know if you can see that, but the game is sort of bugged. Um, let's try that. Nothing, huh? Uh, this Lucario sort of chose to stay here. I would like to draw a new card. Okay. So, it's an Eternatus V deck. Like, we could easily win this. Except, Lucario here, the Lucario coin, is very much in our way. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to resign this one. Give them a win. Like, I could have probably tolerated playing with the coin in the, you know, in, in view, but that's no fun for anyone else to watch. We're going up against Skater Boy here. So we do go first. Our start is pretty mediocre. Um, if they don't knock out our bundle B the first turn, we are able to deal some damage fairly quickly. Yeah, we'll be doing just fine. So, plan here. It was to get the Sinistee, but now I can actually get rid of this to draw... A Detene to then well I guess not discard um, so here's the deal if they have Wilder they can do they can kill it in one turn I'm not gonna risk that they definitely run Wilder whether they have it or not is a different story but I don't want to risk losing immediately um, for the point of stalling. So you do have the Welder. But only one energy. So that was a miscalculation. But it doesn't matter too much. We can get a second Mr. Rhyme here. And get rid of both to draw a bunch. So we get a uh, Sinistee. What I want to do here is trade off this Bunnel Bee for a Seal. Because Seal um, can do quite a bit of damage. Now the question is if I want to do 60 damage to this uh, Charizard V. So if my math is correct, um, they would be at 140, so they're plus 20 160 damage with dugong we can deal 120 damage so the goal would be to i'll hold off well no it's a it's a v i might as well do damage So 
so they do also run Pokemon Center Lady, which, you know, um, big deal. But I do want to build up my board in the background. A bit late for the balloon. Would have liked it last turn. But we can only complain so much. Actually, no, yeah. Roxy is accurate here. Okay, so it's iffy, but next turn I can go for not enough damage. I'm not sure what to do here. I would really like a Roxy at this point. Let's do this, since I have a balloon any anyway. Oh, that's amazing. So I'm gonna risk it. Tea break here. So no Roxy, but we do get a Milo, which helps our cause quite a bit. Let's get a Roxy back from our graveyard here and let's see how much damage we're doing 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, uh, 160, 180, 180 damage. So it's going to have to be this right so we plan for next turn and if they don't have uh pce which is pokemon center lady then we should be doing fine so we do 180 damage and then next turn we should be able to knock it out with 120 damage from this and then it's going to be roxy plus the dugong is going to be enough to knock out these two granting me three prize cards putting us at just about even. Okay, so... Actually, well, no. I was gonna say boss's orders um, to then do something dumb, but... No point in that. It's gonna be this. We don't get an energy. Which isn't good. But before I do anything I don't like. Uh, I'm gonna have to do something I don't like. Which is discarding more cards than it's necessary to get some energy. There's gonna be dual blizzard on these two. So hopefully we get another Poltegeist in one of these prize cards. Energy is actually nice to see. Milo's pretty decent as well. I can always retreat, um, but I wouldn't know into what. So getting a boss disorders here wouldn't be too bad, except that doesn't usually happen. So let's trade off this Sinistee from for something else. Hopefully something better. So nothing good. Let's get rid of this.
yeah so we do have the um, the poltergeist in there it's just a matter of getting it somehow how much damage we're doing actually four seven ten twelve so 220 damage just enough to kill this again boss disorders would be amazing but that's not how this works and i can't just get rid of another bundle bee no i'll use milo to get rid of both roxies And still nothing. Well, not technically nothing, but, you know, not as good as it could be. So it's, the game plan is this, right? Um, we deal damage. Not enough to kill it, but enough to wound it. That was a mistake. Oh, no. I'm going to have to draw another triple acceleration energy somehow. That was a mistake because the game plan was to use dual blizzard so i can only hope that my last triple acceleration energy is not in the price cards so um yeah we're not doing great Huh. Don't we just win? Isn't that like... Let's tail web for now. Do we get two or three? Oh, all three. Okay. So... That was a lucky break, I definitely misplayed there with my um, use of energies, but we'll keep going. So we do go first with a terrible start. Like if they can knock out my Sinisty, then they just sort of win, they get a hit start. Hmm, that's a bad start for them actually. Yeah, we'll get a Mr. Rhyme. Pulti guys. Yeah. So game plan next turn is evolve and then the Denny GX. This is a waste of balloons, by the way. I only have two in the deck, and they are using the U-turn uh, Yon Mega. But it's pretty iffy. Geez, Professor's Research, probably gonna look for a switch. No switch. Interesting. So we evolve. We set this. And then the Denny. 
The reason I don't use tea break first is because if I draw an energy, I can't really use the deny. It, it would be a waste. So we're going to put down another um, Sinistee and then a Bunnelby. And then we can tea break this to hopefully get a Roxy. No Roxy, but we got a Milo. We can get rid of this Dedenai. We don't really need it quite yet. Uh, again, pretty iffy. I'm going to retreat into Bunnelby. Since that's a more valuable resource. And I'm actually going to get rid of these two to try and draw an energy so I can deal some damage. Okay. Hmm. What will be it is, I guess. So, it's you turn for 10, right? And I'm dealing 20, 40, 60 damage. But if they evolve it, it just dies immediately anyway. So we might as well do some damage um, to this Crobat V. Surprisingly enough, the Charizard isn't a big deal, at least to me. I'm more scared of this Yon Mega, the Yon Ma Yon Mega combo with U turn. Um, they're dealing enough damage to take out both of these, I think. So again, gonna get rid of this. And hopefully, we get something better. A second Bunnel B isn't great. But for now, I'll get, I'll get rid of one. And maybe another. I really want a Roxy at this point. And yeah, Roxy does in fact appear. Alright, so we're milling some more. And next turn we get rid of more cards. And more cards. So for now, just Mad Party for 100. And actually, yeah, I ran out of... The wheezing one more would have been great and keep in mind it only takes one energy for this crowbat v to retreat so if they have a switch they basically have game or an energy which works too wow Professor's research on top of it. And it's now that I realize I should have probably. Oh, interesting. Okay. So here's what we do we boss his orders. Well, no, let's count how much damage we're doing. 2, 3, 60 plus 2, that's 8, 160. Yeah, is that math correct? Let me recount just in case. Uh, 3, 5. We're doing 100. Plus these two. So T break on this. Just get rid of it. Then we get rid of this to try and get a Detene. And for good measure, T break. Getting down to 10 cards is not a big deal. Um, the fact that we don't have any more draw power does pose an issue. Yeah, so that was uh, just enough. We get one prize card. And the victory as well. Nice. Cool. So I don't remember correctly. Didn't they start off with a bad hand? 
but so did we. Yeah, so that was a rare case where we stuck it out and we did okay. Let's keep going. Gonna get a cough drop real quick. The honey kind. Because my voice is starting to hurt a little bit. But after a quick cough drop, um, it does get better. I think it's mostly, A, it's morning, I'm not used to using my voice, and B, in general, I'm not using, I'm not used to using my voice. So we already have a game plan here. Um, if I remember correctly, we're second, so we're not attacking first. Or rather, we are attacking first. Um, we can actually probably go for... Yeah, we can go for the, the seal this time around. Uh, mad party shenanigans, who needs that? We need the seal. Now the reason for the seal um, is to try and get Uh, these two knockouts at the same time. So here we go. We get rid of this. Get another. Yeah, we get another Dedene. And we save this for now. I'm just going to test the waters here. Now evolving might be an issue. Uh, let's see what they do. Don't they skip my turn? Yeah, the unfair GX is in fact a little bit unfair. Because knowing them, they're gonna get rid of two of my energies. Yup. All right, we're doing okay though. Um, let's try and get another target for Roxy. Mm, get rid of Milo to so once again, try and get a different target for Roxy. This works too. Heck yeah. Good enough, good enough. So it's starting to look like, not like Christmas. But more like my dugong happens to be in my prize cards. And I'm not fond of, fond of that, at least personally. I don't know what to do with these. Like, what am I going to discard for? I could have used Milo. He already used Unfair GX. I am a dum dum. That's not good for me. Well, we should be fine, right? I should have gotten Mew, but I chose not to read his effects for some reason. Big dum dum. Not sure what to do here. Because he kills almost three Pokemon in one go. And that's not good. Although, now that he has a second Honchkrow, that's more V... Well, rather, we're getting two for each of these we kill. And he also chose not to attack. So... Somehow... He's out of luck here. Let's trade this for something like a Mr. Rhyme. Yeah, we have two Mr. Rhymes. So we get rid of this. Then we get the last Dene. 
and only now do we primate wisdom this away in hopes of another Mr. Rhyme. And actually, that's a bit better. But I'm going to tea break instead. Uh, we don't have too many options here. But we sort of have to go off what we have to work with. We get rid of Milo to draw Weezing. And we unfortunately have to get rid of one of our attacking Pokemon to try and draw a balloon. But surprise, no balloon. Like the worst birthday party. So we're at two, five, six, seven. We're dealing 140 damage. Uh, good enough, I guess. So this should solidify whether or not we have the Dugong, we, Dugong, which we do. We can evolve that this turn. So if Lucas aren't is on our side, they don't draw the Dene, a Crobat, or a Professor's Research, which they don't. Um, they instead get a bunch of more crows. So here's what we do. We get ahead in terms of price cards. Let's trade one of these or whatever comes next. We're at 16 cards, so we really have to be careful with how we draw. And since I'm not going to be drawing a lot, I'm going to put some bundle beast down. Um, we have two energies in this card. Wait, what happened? I can't put energy on my Pokemon. Oh. So we really just lose, huh? This prevents us from playing any of our energies. Special energies. Ah. All right. Well played, well played. Really had me going. Thinking I had chances there. Dang, they really had us beat, huh? I remember seeing the Hodgecrow. Um, and like people breaking uh, packs and stuff. And thinking, you know, that's a pretty OP card. And... I guess it is, but more specifically, it's OP because my deck gets destroyed by that one card alone. Well, you know, good on them. Dang, I really thought I had chances there. Turns out, nope. Uh, our start is decent. If we're first, this is... Yeah, no, we're, we're doing okay. We're doing fine here. So hopefully we draw a Pokemon. And we don't. We absolutely don't. And we also don't go... Well, we do go first. So Seal is definitely a strategy here. So again, next turn, we hope to draw, we're hoping for two things, to draw a Pokemon so we can use Roxy, and then we hope that Dugong is not in the prize cards, because that's more common than you can imagine. I don't know if it's RNG, um, or if that's the case. I do have the, this deck in real life, not the alpha one, but the beta one. Um, I bought the deck to play in real life um, at some point. I do have to protect against Keldeo. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he does uh, bench damage. 50 for each. No, it's just uh, preventing damage from fancy Pokemon. Um, 
Where was I? What was I gonna do? Yeah, let's get rid of this. Oranguru is not as important as as boss's orders. We put this down. We put this down. And we replace um, the Dedene we can't use. Or hopefully a Dugong. We do get a Dugong. That's something good. Something we can be happy about. So we do minor damage to this Evian Snorlax. No big deal. And we also get a prize card. They're actually low on card draw. I don't know what they're going to do. Nice. We draw a Dedene, which can be a target for our Pulti guys when it comes around to our turn. Okay, so we're going for with the same plan. Break on the Dene. Yes. We're not doing great here in terms of card draw. So, what we're gonna have to do is stick to discarding this Bunnel B for now. And actually, it's gonna have to be boss's orders here. Yeah, so dual blizzard. Eating away at um, attack teams HP is very important. Even if we're never gonna kill it, it doesn't matter, it's worth it. So now is when I regret getting rid of my Dedene. I really wouldn't mind having it right now. Okay, so interesting hand. So we evolve this. We place this. Um, they can retreat at some point. I think it is safe to do this. What was I gonna do? Roxy. No. Do I not have a Milo? I'm really not doing great here. So here, even if he retreats next turn, um, I can attach another special energy to it to deal damage to both. Yeah, no, both our draw power ran out somehow, but he had it way worse. Um, I had fuel for a while. And I realize now that I I subconsciously refer to my opponent as he, even though the avatar was, you know, female, I guess. But I think there's like both genders do that. Oh, fine. Uh, men and women both do that uh, to where they have sort of a bias subconsciously. But it's something I sort of noticed recently, like I can't... Um, it's just he is so much easier to say. For some reason, it's just, I don't know, it just feels more comfy. Like, it's stream of thought at this point. Right, so 
we will move on for that from that. It seems we're not moving on fast enough. Come on now. Okay, so we'll see what this person's deck uh, looks like. Not that I'm one to judge, I'm playing an ancient deck at this point. It still does a trick, and it's very fun, in my opinion. Terrible start. We absolutely cannot recover from this. That's one of those rare cases where no matter what deck our opponent has, we cannot fix this. So not great. Let's keep going though. After this, I'll get into a few theme deck duels and we'll call it uh, a stream. Very decent start. I like it. Yeah, so we have game plan at this point. Oh, jeez. Okay. So we want to get. Oof. Absol. Scraggy. Yeah, we, we want to get the jump on this guy fairly quickly. We need to get rid of five Pokemon ASAP. Not sure what to do here. Whoa. I could have gotten. Well, no. I guess not. I don't know. I think I did something. Well, no, I know I did something wrong. I was supposed to get the Tetene, but I thought I was using the evolution thing. Uh, not. Not a good. Not a good play there. We do get options though. Plenty of options. Okay. So, if we play this correctly, we can totally um, get enough to sort of win this. That's two. Um, I don't think it's quite enough though. Or that's 80. They're doing 70 in one shot. Pretty crazy stuff. But you know what? I'm gonna go for it. So here's Bunnel B. And then that wasn't a good balloon placement, but hopefully we draw another quick ball and a target for the quick ball. But we don't. What's the deal with that, huh?
Nope. Gonna retreat. We were at literally four to five. We almost had it. Again, had I not misplayed, we would have probably been fine. Actually, they might evolve the Absol. I wouldn't be surprised. Evolution incense. So yeah, they might find the the good evolution for Absol. Ooh, look at this crafty. All right, what does this crafty here do? Interesting. All right. So, Roxy on these two. We're already at 28 cards. Not great. Two wasted energies among the among those among those cards. Retreat, and we just start getting rid of stuff. Mm. Let's get an evolution Pokemon. Most likely a Mr. Rhyme. No Mr. Rhyme. Not good, not good. Let's get this then. And then... Trade it for... Target. Yeah. Alright. Good enough. Tea break. Tea parties have never been more fun. We basically drew the same thing. Let's try and get rid of a Roxy here. Balloon. Nice. I'm actually pretty happy to see that. Let's kill this off. And I hope they don't have enough to like... Kill off my Bonobi. Although, if he gets a Stadium card with one energy, he can get rid of my Bonobi fairly quickly. Which is something I obviously don't want. He can't do bench damage. So that there goes his win condition. And I think he knows how he can win this. So he's just going to look for a stadium card. Or I guess not. He's going to feed me stuff. Crobat V to draw a bunch. Dang. Let's get rid of Roxy again. Pretty happy to see that, actually. But we just... Hmm... Yeah, we attack again. Mad party. We're dealing 140, which is enough to... Well, not kill the Crobat V, but, you know. Ooh. Mr. Rhyme was in... In the price card. It's, I was looking for him. Turf Raid. Interesting. Marnie is horrible for me here. Eek. Not good. So we really just need an energy and a target for uh, Poltegeist. Although, it's gonna kill it so Crushing Hammer doesn't matter. Actually, Balloon just in case. We need uh, to get rid of this so we can draw. You know what? Sure. I'm pretty sure I have the Giovanni's XL. So... Energy on this. Roxy doesn't matter. So yeah, it's gonna be the Dene. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a lot better. So tea break. Nice. Then it's this to remove his wind condition. And I'm pretty sure I got rid of the dugong. We haven't. Well, doesn't matter too much. Let's retreat here. Um, Primate Wisdom on boss's orders. And... We're good for now. Let's just kill this off. We're dealing 160, 180. 180 damage. So that is enough, well exactly enough, to kill off this Crobat V. So we kill this, and then we need to wait for a boss's orders, which we definitely have in the deck. So we wait for boss's orders, plus the evolution, and we should be fine. Marnie once again, not good for us. Corner. Deals 30 damage. I don't have weakness to it, do I, though? They are dark, so we do have weakness, we do lose to that. Not great. Huh. Well, balloon. Always balloon. Wonderful. Okay. So we're good. So the goal here is actually Boss's orders. Loon. Well, yeah, Primate Wisdom. Why not? Interesting. Retreat for this. And then we kill it. That way. We only have to kill one more. Depending on what we draw. From our prize cards. The pull to you guys. Perfect. And a Bunnelby. Bunnelby alone sort of wins us the game. We just need an energy or the Dene, which I'm pretty sure we got rid of both the Dene's. And once again, no bench damage, so no way to get like a I don't know where win. Sableye, huh? A bit late for Sableye. But once again, we lead with Balloon. That's the pro strat here. Put this down. And now we just hope to draw an energy. Oh, there it is. Not the type we need, though. Not even close. Although... How much are they doing? 90 plus. So we retreat. And then Primate Wisdom. It might have been a mistake to... No, we're fine. We're fine for sure. Um, it's just going to be this, and I'm going to check my discard and hope, yeah, I have one more twin energy. Dual blizzard, obviously. I'm going to hope it's not the prize card. If it is, I think we just lose. Yeah, four of these and four of these. We just lose if it's in the prize cards. So they kill off our dugong. And we really have to hope that twin energy is not our, our prize card. That would be a shame. A big shame on us for misplaying. Okay. So 
this is no longer about our wind condition. Well, it is about our wind condition. It's about energies. And yeah, so Roxy, and we draw almost everything. Yeah, there it is. All right, all right, all right. So we'll throw him a well played. And a few that was close. Yeah, no, if the twin energy was in our prize cards, or if it was a last card, we would have been screwed straight up. Okay, so I'm gonna do some team deck duels. I would do tournament, but it takes a bit long and it's not as fun. So I would do a couple games with Gallery and Surfetched, since it's the most fun team deck in my opinion. I do have both both uh, Charizard decks, but like those aren't fun. They're just Charizard, and who wants to play Charizard? Too boring, too generic. We win the coin flip. This sort of does matter for our deck. Um, we do want to be leading with uh, Set of Widow, but in this case we don't get it, so we want to build. We want to be building up our Hippo fairly quickly. Hippo is a tank and also can start sweeping teams. Um, I do want to prevent him from start from starting to draw cards. They are resistant to fighting, which is not a good matchup for us. Not even close to a good matchup. Now I have B Charizard decks with this Galerian Surfetch deck, but it takes a, a good start, and that's not what this is. With theme decks, it's even more important that you cut your losses, because those can take forever. Theme deck duels, they just take forever. Oh, ignore that. Hold on. Yeah, you saw nothing happen. Cool, cool, cool. There we go. Accidentally opened uh, Chrome and since I have a bunch of stuff on my taskbar, I thought I opened Legends of Rune Terra, and the the start the startup for that it takes a while. It's not fun to wait for. Oh, I thought the glitch would happen again. But oh well. Redrawing isn't too bad of a too big of a deal. Against this deck, we actually do have quite a bit of competition because they came out at the same time in the same set. I believe it, it was Darkness Ablaze. Ooh, we get the set of Widow start. We couldn't have asked for better. I guess we put this on the bench. We don't really need to, but you know. Just so it looks good. So Wingle is their their tank. They're going to be taking 30 less damage. I'm going to have to start building up immunity. Well, not immunity, but attack power fairly quickly. So we double draw. Another set of Widow. Not bad. So if they deal 20 damage, I can't really use Flail. Because... They're, they're fully resistant to it. Seeing Professor's Research is, is actually sort of a big deal. Especially in, in theme decks where you could easily just draw a handful of energies. And just like here. Huh. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to waste an energy, and then wait wait for for next turn to use bead on the Galarian Surfetched. 
Now the thing with this is that any Pokemon that can do bench damage in a theme deck is probably gonna be the best. Um, being able to sweep teams without like the repercussions of like not attacking for a turn or something is also a good way to just get by. Like the hippo here, 150 for land crush, um, no repercussions. Now, obviously, I would have hoped uh, to get um, the baby hippo, but we don't get it. So I'm going to place one more energy on Gutterian Farfetch'd. And that's going to be Professor's Research. Unless I get a baby hippo, at which point I am forced to hold out. And no baby hippo. So it is time for Professor's Research. I'm not going to deal with that hand. I'm going to choose not to deal with that hand. So... What to do here? Do we... Now we're forced to draw more, I guess. There it is, our win condition. We really just need to get rid of this Galarian Darmanitan because Kangaskhan is more of a, a tank. And this is the win condition, 90 plus 30, that's 120. So not enough to kill our Galarian Surfetched. So what I want to be doing is if the Pokemon catcher works, it's basically like boss's orders. Uh, it didn't work. Not good. Not good. Okay. We get another one. We'll start putting energy on it as well. And we draw some more. We gotta build up some more win conditions. We don't have the Doug Trio stall yet. Um, when you evolve Diglett's Doug Trio, you get to use a Rapid Dash effect where you deal 30 damage heads or tails. Um, heads, you don't take any damage next turn. Pretty great for stalling, and they're gonna start dealing damage, which is unfortunate. Ooh. Interesting. Alright, alright. So we're going to kill this off. Here's the Doug Trio. Energy on this. This on the bench. And we hope to draw another Galarian Surfetched. Nope. Let's try again. Uh, still nope. But let's thin out our deck anyway. You know what? We can get away with stalling here. Yeah, this is going to be great. Dig for 60. And then it's heads. They are hurting for sure. They're hidden in terms of one prize card, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. So he retreats like a smart person. And now is when I wish I had a Pokemon catcher. But I don't. Pretty sure there's only one in the deck, which isn't good. Let's put a, an energy on this. I don't see why not. And then we dig for 10 damage. Not even that.
so as you can see with theme decks it's more about like loading up your your win conditions in the back or on your bench and then once you start swinging whoever has a more consistent um sort of back and forth or hit power you know the, the better it is um i'm gonna switch here there it is almost evolved the wrong one would have been terrible whoa let's do a smart thing here and meteor assault to barely kill it we draw one card wonderful Kangaskhan here doesn't do enough damage to kill us which is good for us very good for us so 4080 that does kill it you know what i mean um so it doesn't matter once again let's do the smart thing so pierce still kills it i'm pretty sure yeah so we're sort of even except they happen to be running out of wind conditions and i have mine loaded up Suicune happens to kill us. They aren't Pelipper is a big issue as well. I need to get rid of Suicune. This is an issue as well, but like we can deal with that later. I'm running out of we're both running out of cards. And that's not good. So for now I'm gonna stall. But again, since I draw first, uh, it might not be good. But, you know, not much we can do at this point. Nice. Wave splash for zero damage. You love to see it. So now we evolve this. Now we have two win conditions on the bench. We go for another dig. Uh, Tails this time. No biggie. Although the retreat cost is still one. I think they're hoping that I like deck out, which, you know, I probably will, but I have other plans in mind, such as triple smash. Uh, come on. Barely enough to kill it. All right. We should be fine now. We really need an energy from from anywhere. An energy would be amazing. Crushing headbutt. That's not a good choice. Not at all. I'm gonna save that energy at least for now and it's gonna be meteor assault for 180 and who knows what he's going for next um i do i am sort of on a time crunch here in terms of how many cards i have left bear tick No, I can win this. Oh, jeez. Do I even have enough energy? Basic Pokemon that isn't GX. This isn't a basic. I mean, I really have no choice here. I'm going to have to pray for one more energy. Literally pray. Pray here. 
retreat for this and meter assault literally pray for one more energy no energy there Pelipper. resistance not good for us again literally one energy this is pretty stressful not gonna lie I'm gonna try something since there's nothing better to do okay if we get lucky here we can put an energy on this and then we can do it again yeah okay okay so that's the game plan no i don't think it's gonna be enough oh no I don't even have another po another Pokemon catcher, you know what I mean? It's gonna be Pierce for 10. And then if it turns out I draw an energy, then it turns out I also made a huge mistake. I ah no way if this works we win well um that's it oh my god that was very high stakes I wouldn't say I misplayed, it was just bad circumstances, and the resistance was a bad matchup. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let me see if I have any- let me see if I have any packs to open. I mean, we have a Rebel Clash. Rebel Clash is good enough. Ooh, let's hope for a, a gold card to make us rich. Nothing. Sigilif. Eh. Not much there. Seven uncommon chest. Trade locked. Ooh, look at that. Very exciting. Tauros. Tauros? Magmortar? Nice. Musharna? Huh. A switch? Dude. In foil as well. Damn. Okay. All right. Uh, uncommon chest. Sorry, what I said. Sorry about what I said. Um, I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't know. You can't blame me. You're literally called an uncommon chest. can i say and that's the thumbnail for the vod or the youtube video or everything all right that's i would say it's a pretty good end you know getting a a tag team gx
out of an uncommon chest. A chest of shame. A chest that I got for, like, getting eliminated in the first round of a tournament. My participation trophy. I could go on, but you know, it's the chest of shame. All right, so. That's going to be it for me. Uh, if you enjoyed, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, like, uh, follow me on Twitch. And yeah, Chateau signing off.